Greetings to everyone in your respective capacities. My name is Babilia Christine Peace from Uganda. I work with Uganda Prison Service. I'm a superintendent of prisons in charge software engineering. I do soft I do manage software applications development and I also manage any evolution of any softwares that we have. The story as already has it has been enlightened by our head public service. I will just add on to what he has said. The role of judiciary and law enforcement agencies in confronting cybercrime in Africa. But as already explained before, I look at Uganda. Cybercrimes, the challenges and the way forward in confronting cybercrime in Uganda. ICT is a very new field in Uganda. And uh, we have the National Information Technology Authority, Uganda, as a body that was formed to help oversee Uganda, uh, technology development in Uganda. It, it is an ongoing project. <coughs> it, it is carrying out two projects. Development of the National Backbone Infrastructure, and e-government infrastructure, which is composed of mainly two components, the National Data Transmission Backbone Infrastructure and the e-government infrastructure. This is one source of investment opportunities where e-government is currently being promoted in Uganda. The major aim of the two projects are to connect all the major towns in Uganda with high-speed optical fiber cable-based network through the National Backbone Infrastructure. And uh, to connect all government institutions, the MDAs and local governments, onto the e-government network. And also to connect all the special interest groups like the hospitals, the schools, the tertiary institutions, and other special interest groups. When you look at cyber crime, it's a new field, as I already told you. And uh, it majorly involves criminal activity where computers are used to commit crime. They are a source of crime, they are the place of crime, they are the target of crime. And always the major interest of the cyber criminals is to get into your data. As you can testify with me, data is the greatest asset of any government institution or any organization any business-oriented organization, the biggest at asset is always data. And as we are moving from the traditional methods of keeping data on paper, and you're keeping your data electronically, so if any outside party is interested in anything in your organization, they'll always find a way to hack into your system so that they can get the asset that you hold. And they'll always use this asset to get all they can get from you. Um, that is an overlook of what cyber crime is all about. So with the, the so there's an experience of many hackers getting into the internet, especially for the importers of goods. They will attack, they will attack unsuspecting business people and they will get to discover your weakness. If you ordered for goods, they will divert those goods. If you're making any payments, they'll hack into your emails and tell the person on the other end that actually I changed my business account, send the money to this, and they'll divert your money to their accounts. So that's why cyber security is very, very important in every organization. But this can be solved in various ways. Apparently, it's just starting in Uganda. If we can have active targeting of underground forums 
to disrupt the saturation of any powerful and easy to use cyber criminal tools such as N malware kits and botnets, then we could solve this problem. And then if we could disrupt the infrastructure of the malicious code writers and specialists of web hosts through the active identification of those developer groups and uh, a joint action of law enforcement. If the governments and the uh, ICT industry could work together to dismantle the so-called bulletproof hosting companies, then we could solve that problem. And active targeting of the proceeds of cyber crime of the cyber criminals money. Because you know as they are doing all this, they are looking at getting money. If this can be done in collaboration with the financial sector, for example, Uganda has put in place anti-money laundering law, and this is being implemented under the Financial Intelligence Authority. This can also help curb the cyber crime and the cyber challenges. Continue to develop insight into the behavior of contemporary cyber criminal by means of intelligence analysis, criminological research, and profiling techniques and based on the combined law enforcement, IT security industry, and academic sources in order to deploy existing resources more effectively. So, more must be done to harness the intelligence of network and information security stakeholders, not only to provide a more accurate and comprehensive assessment of cyber criminality, but also to ensure the responses are effective and timely. Active partnership with the ISPs, the internet service providers, and internet security organizations and online financial services are very, very key. The private sector needs to be assured of a confidential relationship in which information can be exchanged for investigative and intelligence purposes. Uh, apparently, the SMS, when the cyber crimes are being carried out, it is very, very hard to have evidence because much of it is done electronically and that SMSs, the short messages sent and the mails that are sent are the only evidences that you can have to prove that surely this person got it into my system. But even the person who sent it on the other end, you don't see them physically. So, but you can get to know where they are and the machines they used by use of the MAC addresses and the IP addresses, and also in collaboration with the ISPs. So I believe if the government works hand in hand with the ISPs, and the ISPs allow access, they give access rights to the, to the investigators, the cybercrime investigators, then you can actually locate the cyber criminal. So I believe if we set up policies that can allow SMSs and mails to be used as evidences in court, then this can also help really get to the right cyber criminals and get them handled in the right way by the law. The establishment of virtual task forces to target internal internet facilitated organized crime is also a very, very good option that we can use. This should be responsive to the evolving criminal environment. More permanent groups for information sharing, more ad hoc arrangements for specific operations such as dismantling the bottlenecks. In all cases, the authorities need to have the flexibility to include a variety of stakeholders, law enforcement, military, private sector, academia and other user groups in order to achieve that Z outcome. I believe that if the private sector and the government law enforcement agencies work together, we can surely have this confronted and solved. Thank you very much for God and the country.